Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Nowy's Dive Team Report. I'm your host, Greg Martin. You know, scuba diving is all about the camaraderie with other divers. And you get that by going to your local dive shop and meeting other divers and spending time getting involved in your local dive club and those kind of things. Uh, dive shops uh, these days have been kind of hard pressed to keep the doors op open in a lot of cases, mainly because uh, there's the internet out there that's taking a lot of uh, dollars away from local dive shops. And uh, we're starting to see dive shops kind of struggling. There are some dive shops though that have figured it out. They have the right mix of the right things and they do extremely well. And that's always a good thing to hear. One of those is Louisville Dive Center. And we wanted to stop and take a few minutes and, and talk to some folks about uh, how they're doing with their local dive shops. Chris Scott is joining us. And if you going, hmm, that kind of sounds familiar. Well, Chris is also the brand new Nowy Midwest rep. So Chris, welcome to the Dive Team Podcast. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Yeah, it's always good. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, the dive shop end of things before we talk about your new role with Nowy as well. Uh, talk a little bit about Louisville Dive Center and what they have done that kind of keeps the divers coming back. Oh uh, well, we've uh, had the same ownership since 1983. It was uh, bought by Ray Scott and Cl Kevin Clifford back then. And they're actually my father and my uncle, respectively. So it's a family business. Uh, they have been Nowy for pretty much completely since the early 90s. Um, I came on the scene kind of helping out there in 1996 when I was 12 and got certified. And they kind of couldn't keep me away from the place from then on out. By the time I was 15, I was helping with classes, you know, if anybody needed schlep tanks or anything like that. And then by... Uh, 2003 or so, I was an instructor, an alley instructor, and then from 2005 until 2012, I ran most of the operations of the store, taught most of the classes, or at least a good portion of them, and then since then, I've been teaching for them and doing their social media work, and uh, they've been pretty successful. Uh, you know, there's they're the uh, kind of the last shop in town in Louisville and seem to be thriving. Things are busy right now, and one way that, you know, we've I think been able to do that is we do engage with our customers on a pretty regular basis. The instructors there, the staff there, they do a really good job of just making people feel welcome and offering things for them to do, places to go, things to see, even if they're local. You know, if you look at our calendar coming up, we have local dives always going on. You know, we go to the rock quarries in the Louisville area. We go a little bit farther than that. You know, we have weekend trips down to the Florida Panhandle. And we get the word out there to people, too. So, you know, we do a lot with social media. And, uh, you know, if, if students are out at the quarry, there's pictures of them going up on Instagram and Facebook so that it keeps diving in people's minds and reminds people, hey, there's something going on. You know, I want to talk about that for a minute. The, uh, the whole realm of social media uh, for a lot of older guys, and I'm one of those older guys, is something it, it can be kind of confusing I mean, we're like, okay, so yeah, who who pays attention to social media? If you look at the Louisville Dive Center Facebook page, which is where we do most of our social media engagement, they've got about 1,300, 1,400 likes, about the same amount of people following them. And they are, and if you look at the review, people who are reviewing, people who are posting, it's a pretty wide variety of people, you know? I would say the average person who's going scuba diving nowadays has a smartphone, has the Facebook app on their smartphone, and probably spends a pretty significant amount of time on there. So it's it's a pretty diverse group of people, diverse group of ages that are using social media these days. How important do you think social media is, though, for uh, the local dive shop? Is is it crucial that to the uh, local dive shop be on social media? Oh, definitely. It's it's for a lot of folks. It's the main form of engagement with other people. That's how they're keeping in touch. That's how they're seeing. You know, that's how they're seeing their nieces and nephews grow up. That's how they're seeing old friends from high school and college. That is a major point of engagement for a lot of people. And a dive shop needs to be a part of that. A dive shop needs to be part of that engagement. Now, it can't be the only engagement. It can't be the only thing a dive shop is doing. There has to be something that you are advertising to get people out to that you're discussing. You know, whether it's a weekend event, a pool party, a trip or something like that. It's, it's, an, it's just another avenue to reach people. You know, it replaces, you know, back in the days, they used to type up a newsletter and then have that printed, and they would physically mail people a newsletter. Well, you got to think of 
Facebook as being the modern day newsletter that people receive. You know, they see that in their news feed, they see upcoming trips and things like that. And even if they don't click on the link or even if they don't do anything at that time, it still puts that little bit in their mind that, hey, diving is an option. When we're thinking about vacations this year, maybe we should think about a diving vacation. We should think about that trip the shop is going to have. And, you know, maybe I should buy that new computer I've been looking at while I'm thinking about it. So it's incredibly important. It's not the only way of engagement. It's not a crush that you can lean on and not have to do anything else, but it's definitely a major avenue to get people into your store. There is also a, another area that has been really, and I mentioned it at the onset, that has really kind of been hard for local dive shops to deal with, and that's the internet. I mean, there there's always a better deal out there, right? I would say that is becoming less and less true. You're starting to see that since most... From, in my experience, one of the things that actually made it a more level playing field for us to compete on is, for instance, when Leisure Pro became a Scuba Pro dealer. When Leisure Pro became a Scuba Pro dealer, I could compete with them on fairly even grounds, whereas before when they were gray market, I couldn't. You know, I was bound to my dealer agreement. They weren't bound to anything, so they could discount dramatically, and I couldn't. So I had to find other ways to appeal to the customer. You know, I could, you know, offer a... Uh, uh, service i could offer free service for a while or something like that but now since they're an authorized dealer they're bound by the same dealer agreement that i am and it makes the playing field a little more level and more and more states are making it so that with online sales if it's being shipped out to somewhere well there's going to be state sales tax too so they might not even be saving on sales tax anymore so the main thing is i found that running a dive shop with the internet being out there is to just be honest with your customer you know, they're going to be looking anyway. They're going to go on Amazon. They're going to Google, you know, the same regulator that you showed them in the store. I always tried to head that off at the pass and say, hey, you might see this elsewhere. You might see it a few bucks less expensive. Come talk to me and give me the chance to compete. And I would say most of the time, you know, maybe even nine times out of ten, I'd see that person back in the store. They went and looked it up and they still bought from us because I was honest with them. I treated them like an adult. I think that's key. And that leads me kind of to another point is that personal touch, that one-on-one -on -one bit. I know it's important, and word of mouth is probably crucial to a local dive shop. Any tricks and tips that you want to pass on to uh, any other shop owners out there about what maybe Louisville Dive Shop is doing? One thing we are doing is we are staying engaged. You know, like I said, with social media, we are talking to people. We are talking about sales. We are talking about equipment. And then they come in and talk to us. You know, we treat them. It's, it's cliche, but we do treat them as a friend. And people tend to appreciate that. They tend to come back and we just are honest with them. If they are looking at something online, we'll show them the other options. We will mention that, hey, this might be cheaper online, but here's the benefit from buying with us. And I do think people appreciate honesty. They appreciate authenticity. You know, if you come across as you're just trying to hide something from them, be like, oh, they, you don't want to go on the Internet. It's like they're going to anyway. So just, you know, I think honesty plays a big part in retaining that customer because it does create that and foster that personal relationship. Let's talk about new position with Nowy. All right. Kind of, kind of exciting. Uh, and, and if you have any questions out there and you, you're thinking about, oh, I may be, you just heard something that... Uh, that Chris said that was important about what Louisville Dive Shop is doing. You can always reach out to Chris and the folks at Louisville Dive Shop and uh, and talk to them about it. So, you know, what what are you doing that's making you a bit more successful, I guess, and, and especially in, when it comes to selling NAWI and teaching NAWI classes. But, Chris, you've just joined the ranks of uh, the NAWI uh, reps as a Midwest Indeed. rep. So Indeed. Indeed. Talk a little bit about uh, taking over. Yeah, I, uh, I'm hitting all the Midwest. Well, I uh, just uh, started May 1st, and I've started uh, kind of traveling around a little bit. I've already visited quite a few of the shops in Ohio. I'll be going back uh, for a crossover in Ohio next month. And after that, I'm going to try to hit Michigan and try to get out and see everybody before the end of the year. Uh, but what I'm basically trying to do is just be the, the point of contact that we need out there and to talk to people about Naui, talk to our, make sure I'm supporting our current affiliates and, you know, trying to get new ones. Um, yeah, it's, it, I'm really excited about it. I'm a, an evangelist for Naui. I have been for, for as long as I've been an instructor. I was a Naui instructor before I was anything else. And whenever anyone had asked me before that, I was always very proud to be a Naui instructor. And, yeah, I get to kind of go spread the word a little bit. Fun, fun. Uh, I mean, you've been 
you've been certified uh, since age 12 is what I'm seeing here. So you were you were a young one. Yeah, I, I actually did my first dive when I was 10 and uh, on Snapper Ledge in Key Largo off a friend's boat with my dad. And that kind of hooked me. Uh, you know, back, back in the 90s, you had to be 12 to be certified. So I actually took my classes when I was 11 and sent in the paperwork the day I turned 12. I was that excited about it. And uh, by the back then, you could there's a little loophole where you could do that. They've kind of they've closed that since. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they 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 closed that little loophole. Uh, and then when I turned 18, I got my dive master pretty much as quickly as I could. And by March of 2003, March or May of 2003, I was a uh, I was going through my instructor course, and I was a course director by age 22. So if I got a chance to teach classes, work with classes, work with ITCs, anything, I was I was doing it. That's that, fantastic. That whole time, I've I've been pretty much straight ahead now. Fantastic, fantastic, and and we're glad to have you along. Uh, again, you're covering that whole Midwest region, and a, a lot of people ask the question about you know, well, who gets certified in uh, in the Midwest? Well, I did, but uh, <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> Quite a few people. The Very Great Lakes long. offer some fantastic diving. There are some wrecks in the Great Lakes that you will not see anything like anywhere else in the world you know ships that still have wooden ships that still have their rigging in place in some cases you know mm -hmm. beautiful wooden wrecks you've got uh, uh you know some great dive shops in landlocked areas with very passionate divers and passionate instructors you know love local diving love diving love dive travel and so yeah don't don't discount the midwest we uh we do a lot of diving here too nice nice there is one last thing I want to ask because you, you just mentioned it and it, it keyed a, a question in my mind back on the first topic about dive shops. How important do you think dive travel is that local dive shops offer that? I think it's incredibly important. I think that, you know, you are, if a person is going on a dive trip with you, that means you have multiple points of contact with them, which means you also have multiple opportunities to sell them continuing education to get them an advanced class to get ready for the trip you know if you're like we have a weekend trip going down to dive the uh, the uh, uss Ariskany in pensacola the aircraft carrier uh middle of next month and there's a lot of people going who you know they've signed up for a nitrox course because they're going to dive nitrox on they signed up for an advanced course and they may or may not have signed up for that course without the opportunity to travel so even if it's just a short long weekend trip or if you know it's a week-long trip you've got a big group going to roy tan all those people are going to come in beforehand. They're going to buy gear. They're going to sign up for classes. And that increases our revenue as a dive shop, and it gives us more points of contact for sales. And, yeah, it works. And, we, you know, get to go on vacation. Get to go to lead a trip down to Roytan or down to Pensacola. It's great. It's always fun. Always fun to do that. Absolutely. Well, Chris, best of luck to you in your new position with Naui. And, uh, I appreciate I, it. Again, if anybody is interested in picking your brain a little bit, uh, Naui Affiliates in the Midwest, or uh, you're thinking about becoming a, a NALI affiliate, be sure and get a hold of Chris and uh, get a hold of the office, and they'll put you in contact with Chris as well. So, Chris, uh, best of luck to you, and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Greg. Much appreciated. All right. Hey, I'd love to hear your comments about the podcast as well. You can email me at podcast at NAWI.org. And, of course, if you do enjoy the podcast, be sure and subscribe on iTunes and Google Play so that you do, don't miss a single episode. And please, if you like what you hear, hit that five-star review. We'd sure appreciate that. And that's it for this episode of Nowy's Dive Team Report. I'm Greg Martin. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you underwater.